many people, anyone who works with chronically ill people, will typically notice that the chronically ill will often hold their breath unconsciously. And so you can translate that into, if you're holding your breath, what, what else are you holding on to that doesn't serve you? Hey, Hilda here. Recently, I was with my lovely friend Mary Reddick in Mexico, and we took some time to talk about breathwork. Actually, we did a lot of breathwork ourselves and thought, why don't we put this on video? So enjoy. Welcome back to my channel, Mary. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. You have traveled the world. You have learned so much about health and wellness. And on this trip in Mexico, we've been discussing the power of breathwork. So I wanted you to just talk a little bit about why that is so important to our health. Yes, well, breathwork is so important because it allows your body to handle an immense amount of stress without feeling stressed. So for instance, if you put yourself through something painful, like an ice bath, and you don't do breathwork first, it's very painful. But if you do specific forms of breathwork first, it's not as difficult. It's so much easier. And I think it's a great metaphor for life, for how we start our days. This has been very well studied. Uh, one of my favorite books is The Marshmallow Test that goes over this. And it's, it's really that how you make decisions and how you feel about your life are almost dependent upon how you start your day and what the activity is before you do it, your state of mind, mm -hmm. right? So if you're put with a challenge and you were just dancing, you're likely to do very well with that challenge. If you're put with a challenge and you were just in a fight, you're not gonna do well with the challenge. And so <laughs> that's an extreme example, mm -hmm. but I, I think it really speaks to how you can find your inner strength and your inner power and how with the exact same life, you can see it and feel it from a beautiful state or from a difficult struggling state. Who do you think were some of the first people that came upon the idea that using our breath as a tool could help get us into that parasympathetic mode? I think this has been since the beginning of humankind, mm. because with each of the groups and the communities that we go to visit, breathwork is a natural part of it. Mm. They may not organize it as breathwork like some do, like the Kundalini say, but we were canoeing with some of the indigenous population here, and the act of the canoe, the way that you move the canoe, forces the breath into a rhythmic cycle that we would call HRV breathing, right? Mm. To lower cortisol, mm. get us into deeper sleep, and help us respond to stressors better, heal faster, right, when our cortisol is down. Uh, other places that we've gone also around <laughs> here with the Temez Cal, which is a traditional Mayan ceremonial sauna, but, but much more than a sauna. <laughs> it's, it's very intense and it's a challenge. And there's a lot of breath work and singing that goes along with that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, there's many different places around the world. There are the deep divers, the women in, in South Korea and Jeju Island who can hold their breath for so long that they've actually gotten larger spleens. And then of course there's the Philippian tribe, which has become much more, I would say well-known, although they're still very hard to get to, who primarily live on the water and also are known for having the large spleens and able to hold their breath for an unheard of amount of time. So I think where we've gotten the shallow breathing and the need to retrain ourselves is from our modern living. Mm. I think the breath work was natural and a part of daily life beforehand. I interviewed James Nestor, the author of Breath, A New Science of a Lost Art or something yes. like that. And uh, he talked about how our lives are actually measured in the length of breathing we do. In other words, the less we breathe, the longer our life. It's like the less toilet paper you use, the longer the roll will last. Yes. So I was like, oh, that's interesting because I've always thought about my life defined in terms of the heartbeat, but it's actually slowing down the breath increases our options for our opportunity for longevity. That's right. That's right. And yeah, his book is phenomenal. So my next question for you is, Let's talk about some of the breathing techniques because I know there's like four, seven, eight, there's box breathing, there's the extended exhale. If someone is brand new to breath work, where should they start, do you think? I find so many people struggle with their sleep that I would start with four, seven, eight mm -hmm. because four, seven, eight breathing often helps people fall asleep and stay asleep and rise up bring up their HRV, their heart rate variability, which is very different than your heart rates. Uh, we actually want a higher number with that one usually. 
So I like to start with four, seven, eight, and that's where you inhale for four, you hold for seven, you exhale for eight. When you do that, it naturally brings your breath per minute to 3.2. And all the studies I've looked at at least, I'm sure there's many out there that I haven't, but of the ones that I've seen, anything under five breaths per minute, and especially four breaths per minute, you start to get the bigger health effects. So that's why I like to bring that in. And I'll usually just start having them do that breath work until they fall asleep. Then once they get more strength, they're healthier, then we might go to the more traditional recommended, which is two, two sets of 20 minutes a day. Oh yeah. I'm going to try to incorporate that myself. I think I told you breath work is one of my goals for 2023 to incorporate it. And it's not just simply for the improved HRV, the better sleep, managing stress, but it's also because honestly, the spiritual component of it, there's something very spiritual about our breath. I mean, we are spiritual beings, spirit, breath. It's all one of a piece, right? Yes. Yes, definitely. And I think we can always look at these things and bring it into our own life. Many people, anyone who works with chronically ill people, will typically notice that the chronically ill will often hold their breath unconsciously, not in a healthy way, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, or have very rapid, almost hummingbird breathing from the chest. And so you can translate that into, if you're holding your breath, what, what else are you holding on to that doesn't serve you, right? What else are you kind of stuck in? So you, you can always bring it into the spiritual, not just with the, the beauty of the breath and the fact that we actually don't have to do anything to breathe. Right? It's almost like the earth breathes us rather than we breathe, uh, unless we become conscious of it and we start to do two 20-minute sessions a day. But the, <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's, there's so many aspects to it. And, um, and one of the things that I love about it the most, which is the case with most ancestral wisdom, if not all, is that it's free and it can be done anywhere. The root Latin word for breath and spirit is the same. <gasps> Yes, girl. In Espanol, for example, in Spanish, respirar is the same as espíritu. Do you hear that in there? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so that's amazing. So what I do is as I breathe in, I'm, I am I breathe in goodness and mercy and grace and all the things I'm receiving from the Great Spirit, and then I exhale the stress, the anxiety, the worry, the concerns. I let go. And so it's this constant rhythm that I find really a beautiful part of my spiritual practice as well. Yeah. So I was wondering if we could just do a couple of breathing exercises here to introduce it to people sure. because I think it is going to provide so many benefits. And again, it's something I'm starting to explore to include more into my daily habits because I know it's an area in which I can grow and it will give me time to be intentionally present too, which I think is important. So important. Yes. All right. So which breath technique should we use first? Maybe we start with four, seven, eight. Since okay. We perfect. Talked about it. Yeah. Why don't you guide us through? Okay. okay. So we'll inhale for four from the belly. Hold for seven. And out through the mouth for eight. Inhale for four from the belly through the nose. Hold for seven. And exhale for eight. Let's do one more. Inhale for four through the nose. Hold for seven. And exhale for eight. And you can do just that little series, three in a row at any time during the day, and it will help your body relax and realize, oh, I can handle whatever's coming because things come and they go, like the waves, like the breath. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention too is, have you heard of email apnea? Uh, yes, I just heard about this. Yeah, I so think it's true. I think it's true too. What happens is you get on a roll, right? You're answering emails, you're doing a few little things, and, and people start holding their breath unintentionally, just as you were saying earlier. So. Pay attention as you're working throughout the day. If you get that shallow breathing feeling or that you notice you're holding your breath and try some of these exercises. 
Hey, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this conversation and if you'd like more practical tips from me or my friends. Take care. Hasta pronto.